Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. So you're getting into slow pitch jigging and you have a bunch of questions. Do I need certain gear? What's the best line to use? What about a leader? How long does it need to be? What type of leader should it be? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna go over some of these most commonly asked questions about slow pitch jigging. That's right, we're going over the gear, the line, and the leader for slow jigging. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, so we're talking about slow pitch jigging gear, line, and leader. All right, so when it comes to slow jigging, this is what a traditional slow jig rod and reel looks like. What it is, is it's a conventional reel and it's set up on a slow jigging rod. Don't let the little wimpy rod fool you. It's got a lot of power. This blank has been technologically designed to handle some fairly hefty fish. What the setup that I use is, is this is an accurate 600N, a 600 narrow from the Boss Fury series. Give you a good look at it. And it is spooled with braid. We'll get to that in a second. The rod that it is on is a six foot six star rod from the Plasma 2 series. It's a great rod. It has acid wrapped guides. What acid wrap or spiral wrap guides means is that they start on top where the line comes out of your reel and they wrap counterclockwise towards the tip, as you can see. So basically when you're jigging, the theory is, is that this prevents your line from ever touching the blank of the rod and compromising your braided line. What you want when you're selecting your slow jig rod is that it has this parabolic bend. These rods are super tough right at the base, right here. This is where the power of your rod comes in. Right here, the flex of the rod that you see is what you want. That way it loads your jig and it pitches it and it flutters down, pitches it and it flutters down. That is what this technologically specialized gear for slow pitch jigging has come to be. Now, they do make rods that are set up for spinners. They make a slow jigging rod that's set up for a spinner and you can put a spinner on it. That comes to personal choice. What are you more comfortable with? You more comfortable with a spinner or with a conventional reel? Personally me, I like a conventional reel. I could go a little smaller on this, but I like this. This is what I've had for a long time and I'm not changing it. When it comes to selecting your rod, you gotta consider how deep you're gonna be going and how big the jigs are. Slow jig rods are not rated for line weight like regular rods and reels where they're rated for 10 to 20 pound mono or 30 to 40 pound braid. Slow jig rods are rated for the jigs you are going to be using in grams. This rod that I have is rated for jigs between 150 and 400 grams. So I considered that when I was making my purchase, I said, hey, where am I typically going to be fishing? What depth range? So when it comes to that, the depth range, you want to consider your jigs. You usually want to be within a 50 foot variance of your jig weight to your depth. For instance, if I have a 200 gram jig, I don't want to be much shallower than 150 feet and I don't want to be much deeper than 200 feet. And you also have to consider all of your variables when it comes to jig selection, such as current and wind. Okay, so don't get me wrong about the rods. You don't have to pick the rod that I have. You will want to consider where you're fishing, how big your jigs are gonna be. Remember, the rods are weighted for the jig weights. So just keep that in mind as you are making your selection or doing your research. Some common manufacturers of rods, in case you don't know any, are from the cheaper end, there is a company called Goofish. And then you can move up and spend a little bit more money on brands like Temple Reef or Phoenix. And if you wanna go for the Star Rod, which is kind of in the middle of all those three, that's fine. Do it, they have great rods. Most of my rods that I have on my boat and that I fish with 
are star rods. Don't overthink it too much. Just imagine what you're going to be doing more likely than not. That way you can make a selection and you can get out there and start fishing. The next question I get all the time is what line do you need? What line do you use? You have to use braid to do any jigging. Braid does not give. Monofilament gives. It's elastic. It stretches. So you have to imagine when you go to load your rod, if you have mono, your mono is going to stretch and your jig isn't going to react properly. Braid doesn't give. When you load that rod, you pull it, the jig pitches and flutters and falls back down. That is the effect that braid has on jigging, which is why you need braid for jigging. Now, I'm going to clarify what type of braid. Selecting your braid is a counterintuitive decision for most people. Let me explain this. Typically when you think, oh, hey, I'm going to go out deep. I'm going to go five, six, eight hundred feet. I'm going to need thicker line, bigger fish. The answer to selecting braid for slow jigging is the exact opposite of that. So what happens is the deeper you go with slow jigging, the further out your line will belly out as you're letting down due to the current and the drag resistance of the line through the water. The deeper you go, the thinner the diameter of the line you will want. Let's say you're staying in 200 feet all the time. You could stick with 30 pound J braid, which is what I have. This is 900 yards of 30 pound J braid. That's just fine. But let's say you're consistently going out to 800 feet. You're gonna wanna consider going with 20 or 10 pound braid. It will slice through the water and give you that more vertical presentation that you're looking for when jigging. Now there's two types of braid. This is J braid. Now if you're willing to really make the commitment, you can go with what's called PE braid, polyurethane braid. What polyurethane braid is, is it's significantly tougher than J braid and it's thinner in diameter. 20 pound PE braid is thinner and it cuts through the water and it will give you that more vertical presentation more so than 20 pound J braid. So you have to consider that. How deep are you going? And what are the typical conditions that you think you might be up against when it comes to your jigging? And that's what I thought about when I spooled my slow pitch setup. I said, hey, I typically jig in between two and 500 feet. Sometimes I'll go out a little deeper, but not more than often. So I went with 30 pound braid and I've got an enormous amount of it on this rip. The end of all results for line selection is you need braid. And the last common question is leader. What leader do you use? First and foremost, you don't want to use wire leader. I completely understand it is a calculated risk you are taking against toothy creatures, but you'll be just fine going up against them more often than not. I've caught plenty of kingfish. Once the several hooks from the jig start getting tagged into the fish, it takes a lot of wind out of their sail and they stop trying to bite for the line and get off. So typically you want to use fluorocarbon for that more natural, invisible, stealthy presentation. What I have on my setup is about 15 to 20 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon. And that's hooked to my 30 pound J braid. When it comes to leader length, you only need about 15 to 20 feet. You don't need a 50 foot shock core. You are using braid and you do need a little bit of that mono to give some of that shock resistance and help set that hook. And also, like I said, it provides a little bit of stealth for you. Now, you can choose whatever weight you want. You can go with 20 pound mono. You can go with 20 pound fluorocarbon. Like I said, I've got 40. You can up it to 60 or 80 if you want to. Once you start getting into the heavier weights, it sort of makes it difficult to thread your leader onto your main line. Speaking of which, we're gonna use a knot called an Alberto knot to thread our leader onto our main line of our reel. And that answers the question about leader. Yes, you should use fluorocarbon. You only need about 15 to 20 feet of it, max. And no, do not use wire leader. What I'm gonna do right now to bring this episode full circle is I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna show you how to thread your leader onto your braid, hook on what will be at the end of your leader, which is a simple solid ring. That way you can get it and hook it onto your jig of your choice. Get out there, get fishing. 
To do this properly, you're gonna need a couple things. I use about 15 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon, an 80 pound solid ring, a cutting tool, a sharp knife, and we'll need our main line, which is our 30 pound braid. The first thing we're going to do is you take your fluorocarbon leader and you make a loop and you pinch the end of it. Next thing you do is you take your main line of your braid and you pull it through that loop. And you get about six to eight inches of it. Next thing we're going to do is we have sent it from the front to the back of our loop. So we will stay, we will bring our braid around the front side and we're going to wrap it up over both lines, the tag and the main line of our leader. We're going to wrap it around there six to eight times. So this is what you have. You have your braid wrapped on here. So as you can see, we're threading the braid onto the fluorocarbon. Now we're going to wrap back down the other way, wrapping around and in between the wraps that we just made, going back towards our loop. You only have to wrap, you want to wrap about the same amount of times, keeping your wraps in between so it almost makes a cross hatch pattern. If you don't get it perfect, don't worry. Braid acts like a Chinese finger trap in this application. So, all right. Now, we are at this point. We have wrapped up and we have wrapped back. This is what we're looking at. So, you want to make one more time where you send your tag. You want it to come out the same side as you sent your line in. So we will go from the back through the front and then we're good. Now, we're simply going to pull down on our leader in both directions and tighten it up and there is a streamlined finished Alberto knot you can barely see it it's made really to flow seamlessly through the guides of the traditional acid wrapped slow pitch rod trim up our tag end and then we will use our knife to trim up the tag end of the braid. You want a sharp knife, that way you can do it in one seamless cut. There's our tag end. And here is our Alberto knot. No matter how hard we pull, that's not coming undone. Now the next step is to fasten our solid ring onto the end of our fluorocarbon. You find the end of your fluoro and you take it, you pass it through. And I fasten this with a basic clinch knot. and grab onto the ring pull that tight I will 
show them off the tag. And there you have it. So this is all you have that is coming from your line is your leader with a solid ring. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about the selection process for the gear, the line, and the leader for slow pitch jigging. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.